Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, webcast uh, covering uh, annotative objects in CAD. Uh, my name's Shan O'Rourke from Civil Survey Solutions, um, Technical Services Manager. I have the uh, delight to be hosting um, the, the front end and back end of this uh, session. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to be joined, we are joined uh, by Selwyn Pendergast. Um, so, Selwyn, say hello so they know you're alive. Yes, I'm alive. Hello, yeah. everyone. Welcome. So, uh, Selwyn's going to be delivering uh, this session, uh, and um, Selwyn's history uh, is long um, in the industry, um, drafting and CAD management. Um, so, uh, there's a wealth of experience um, Selwyn has on the CAD management front. Uh, this session is looking at annotative objects. Um, if I look at my own experience learning AutoCAD, I admit um, I didn't really get to layouts and viewports for a number of years. Uh, it was a, a great sort of opportunity to improve production. Um, but one thing I found once I got into using viewports where you can scale your views uh, is I was having to duplicate my text. So I'd have a zoomed out view and I'd have zoomed in views and I, for say the street name, I'd be duplicating the text and doubling it up so it looked good in both views. Um, Selwyn's going to talk to you all about annotative objects, but the opportunity is to set up objects that will rescale uh, for you automatically so that when you go to plot, uh, it's all the right size. So uh, just before we, we kick off uh, to do that, I thought I might run a couple of uh, polls uh, just to get everybody interactive. So I'm going to launch a, a poll with a, a question. So you should see a, a quick poll on the screen. So if you could just um, give me your votes, um, just interested to know if you do use annotative objects or if it would be something new that you were, you were interested in or if you had a dabble but um, hadn't used it very much. Okay, so I'll close that poll and just share it with you. So uh, in the audience today, we have almost half the audience um, do use annotative objects uh, on a regular basis. Some of you have dabbled, and uh, some of you have never tried it before. So one in five uh, in the room um, are new to annotative objects. I will uh, go to the next one. So my next question is a little bit deeper, but uh, I'm just interested, uh, for those of you who do use annotative objects or have given it a go before, what sort of object types do you make annotative? Uh, it's fair to say that a lot of us don't normally hit up blocks and hatches, uh, but they could be made annotative as well. Let's have a bit of a look. <clears throat> okay, so of those of you who responded, well, it all makes sense now, 84% um, of you use it for text, um, a third use it for dimensioning, very few for hatches and blocks. So there's probably um, some excitement and interest there uh, where someone takes you through how to annotate blocks and hatches and how that works. So um, thank you very much for responding on those. It gives us a good bit of feedback for sort of the tone of the session. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is uh, not spoil Selwyn's thunder. I'm going to hand over to Selwyn now. He's going to take you through how annotative objects work. So Selwyn, over to you. Oh, before I hand over, uh, my apologies. Yes. Uh, yeah. There is a, a question and answers area or a questions area. You should see that on your, your panel on the right. Um, I encourage you to ask questions as we go along. Uh, I will be uh, here to field those questions and reply. And there's also a chat area uh, if you just wanted to uh, otherwise um, chat away uh, with myself. So I'm going to hand over to Selwyn, but uh, again, I encourage people to pop questions as we go. Uh, I probably won't interrupt Selwyn as we go along, but uh, certainly we'll cover those questions at the end. So Selwyn, over to you. Thank you very much, Shane. Okay, guys, um, we're going to have a look at annotative objects today. Um, what we do with annotative objects, they can be text, mtext leaders, multi-leaders, dimensions, blocks, and attributes. Um, when annotative ability is added to an object, it can actually scale itself based on the drawing scale that you have set in your drawing. So this works for model space and also for layouts. So you might be working in a model, in model, sorry, 
in model space and you might want to be working at 1 to 500. And if we have the annotative objects set, they will be scaled correctly for that scale. So um, we're going to have a look at how they work. They can be, you can have multiple scales applied to an object or a single scale. You can add all the scales to every object and you can remove the scales if need be, depending upon the view that you want. And the objects that, we, that can use annotative scaling is text and then text, which a lot of you are already using, and also a lot of people are using it for dimensions as well. Not so much for leaders and multi-leaders. Um, it can also be applied to hatches and blocks, and also the attributes within blocks can be annotative, and you could have the whole block being scalable or just the attributes being scalable in your drawing. That's, a cho that's your choice. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create an annotative style for both text and dimensions. In my drawings, I've got um, typical um, styles already set up, so we're not going to cover how to create a style or anything like that. I'm just going to assume that you have the dimension styles, text styles, and all these other settings that aren't really specific to annotative text or annotative notation. So we're going to create the styles and then we'll set the style current. So once we have those set up, we can go in, or we don't have to do it in this sequence, but we're then going to go in and we're going to create some scales. The scales that we're going to create are based on a metric drawing that is drawn in meters. So all our scales will have M as a suffix, so we know what the scales are. If you guys have looked at the scales in AutoCAD before, you'll see that they're just 1 to 200, 1 to 500 and all that sort of stuff, and they don't really apply to how we work here. So we'll set up our scales and then we'll set a current scale. The current scale that we'll set will be 1 to 1000, which is basically one to one for our text and our objects scaling. And it's the easiest to start with one to a thousand and we'll, you'll see as we go along how this all works. Once we've got our scale set, we're then able to create text objects or any object that is annotative. We're going to start with text and then we're going to assign scales to these pieces of text that we create. We'll also be doing dimensions at the same time. And then once we have the, the objects in our drawing and the scales assigned, we'll have a look at each of the scales. I'm only going to create three scales in our drawing, but with each scale, we're able to move the individual annotative objects based on the scale. And that won't affect any of the other scales that we're working with. So we'll have a play around in model space. And then once we've got our scale sorted out, We'll go into a layout and we'll create some viewports in there and I'll show you how the display changes when we change the scale of our viewports. So to get started, I'm just going, I've just started a AutoCAD drawing. We're going to be concentrating on the annotation tab of the ribbon. We'll also be looking at the properties window and we'll be looking at the status bar, what's showing down there. If we have a look at the ribbon on the annotate tab, we have these entries over on the right hand side. Sorry. That say add current scale, scale list, add delete scales and sync scale positions. Under add current scale, we've also got delete current scale. So that's the only area that we really need to look at for our annotative scaling on our ribbon. And then down on the status bar, we have three icons. If we don't have those icons displayed, it's worth turning them on. And the easiest way to turn them on is just to go over to the, the three bars over on the right hand side, click on customization and then place a check mark next to annotation visibility, auto scale and annotation scale. 
With our setup, the easiest way to work it out is with these toggles down here. Our first toggle is show annotation objects at current scale. My current scale here is stated as full scale, which is just one to one. And the scales that I have in here are just one to one and full scale. We'll go in and we'll change those shortly. The next button across is add scales to annotative objects when the annotation scale changes. By default, I would recommend leaving this off. However, if you're working on a drawing that's say one to 500, one to 1000, one to 250, you might want all the text to display as you change scales. However, if that's not what you want, you'll find that when you change scale, you'll have all this additional text or all these rescale blocks and things in your drawing, and that is probably not what you want. So just to recap, first button is to show the annotation objects at, at current scale. We have that turned on most of the time. There are times you want it turned off, but generally it's left on all the time. The next button we generally leave off, but it depends on your work and how you're planning to do your drawing. The next entry across is our actual scales that are available in our drawing. As I said, I only have full scale and I have one-to-one -one in here. We also, there's an entry here that says custom, and this is where we will go to create our text sorry, our drawing scales. Also, while we've got this little panel displayed here, if you have X references in your drawing, you can actually show the, the scales of the X references, the available scales in there, and you can set them current. Another entry down the bottom is percentages. And if I click on percentages, you'll see that the entry below now says full scale 100%. That signifies that when we place our annotative objects in our drawing, they'll be full scale. So that's why I suggest using one to 1000 as your starting point, because that, that generally one to 1000 is your full scale drawing. Okay, so we'll go back into this tab here and we're gonna choose the entry that says custom. In here, this shows this, the drawing scales that are available in our drawing. You can press reset and it will load metric scales and imperial scales or it will do both. However, it's probably best to create your own, own drawing scales and that's the easiest way to do that is to click on the add button. And in here, I'm going to create, name my scale, my drawing scale as one to 1000 and I'm going to put an M at the end to signify that it's meters. Our scale properties, our paper units and drawing units will both be one because one to 1000 in meters is full scale. So once we've got that one entered, click OK and that entry comes into the list. Now I'm going to add another one and this one I'm gonna make as one to 500 M as we did before and our paper units are one and our drawing units will be 0.5. We'll click OK on that and now we create another scale and this one will be one to 2000. M and the drawing scale here for the papers, paper is one and drawing units is two. So I've got these three entries here. I've got them out of sequence. So we can actually move them up to get them in order or move, move the ones that you use more frequently up towards the top of the list so they're easy, more easily accessible. So all I've got here is one to 500, one to 1000 and one to 2000. I also have full scale and I have one to one. The one-to-one -one entry is not able to be deleted. However, any of the scales in your drawing that aren't in use can be deleted by pressing the delete button. And if you've made a mistake entering your scale, you have the edit button also. So we'll click on okay there. We've got our three scales applied to our drawing. And now because I have percentages showing, I've got one to 500 meters, 
and it shows the annotated objects at 200, twice the size of what they would be normally. At 1 to 1,000, they're at full scale, and at 1 to 2,000, they're at half size. So I have my scales in here, and now I'm going to set the scale current. Okay, so now we need to create dimension styles, text styles, and whatever other styles that we need to, and make them annotative. I have um, preset styles in my drawing because they're set to what I would be using if I was doing a drawing. So I'm just going to modify the current styles. I've got a text style of CSS, I've got a dimension style of CSS, and I've got a multi-leader style of CSS. So I'm going to modify this entry here, the CSS one. The easiest way of doing that is just clicking on the, the little arrow down here on the corner of the tab, click on text styles, and the text style window will appear. In here, we have our style and we have standard. Um, standard is default style and it can also be made annotative if you want. However, we're just gonna stick to the styles that I've made in my drawing. I've already got my settings that I need for my drawing. However, there's a button here that says annotative. Once I place a check mark next to that, the text style now becomes annotative and therefore will be able to scale whenever you change the drawing scale. There is also a button here that says match text orientation to layout. I'm going to leave that unchecked at the moment. What that signifies is when you go into a viewport in a layout, if you rotate the UCS or the orientation of your drawing content, if match text orientation to layout is set, the text will remain at whatever angle. If it's set to 90 degrees horizontal in model space, it will be horizontal in your viewport. If it's at 45 degrees in your model space, in your layout, it will rotate to 45 degrees, ignoring the orientation of your viewport content. So that's all there is to creating an annotative text style. Click apply, and that's set. So you'll now see up here on the, the drop down, I've still got the name CSS as the text style, but next to that, it has the little star picket symbol. That signifies that that text style is annotative. If I expand that, you'll see that standard does not have that little star picket, so therefore it will behave as older versions of AutoCAD were. Annotative text came in in AutoCAD 2008, so it's been around for a long time now, about 10 years or so. So, um, yep, that, using that one would be the old style of creating text. So our next entry is our dimensions. We're gonna do the same thing with the dimensions. I have the dimension style already set up. I assume that you guys at your business or home would have your dimen typical dimension styles, text styles and things like that. So that's what I'm assuming here. So now I have my dimension style here. CSS and I want to modify this dimension style. All we have to do to make a dimension style annotative is to go to the fit tab and over on the right hand side we've got scale for dimension features and we have a checkbox that says annotative. Once we check that these other options disappear as the, the drawing scale will control the scale of our dimensions. So once that's set, okay, and you'll see you've got a star picket next to CSS here. I close that and you'll see that the ribbon entry up here has changed to CSS also. I'm gonna do the same thing with the multi-leaders. Click on the little down arrow. I'm gonna go into modify for CSS. And down the bottom here, we have scale additive, and it does the same thing as what the dimension did, where it just grays out the other entries. And you'll see we've got the star picket once again, and up here on the panel, we have the star picket showing. So if there's a star picket next to any of the styles, 
they will be annotative in our drawings. So when we change our scale from say one to five, sorry, from one to one thousand to one to two, sorry, one to five hundred, the text or objects will scale up by two. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a simple line work object in the drawing. I was going to grab a civil drawing, but I thought it may become too complex. So I'm just going to go through and create an object. So I have this in my drawing. And what we're going to go through, we're going to place some dimensions and we're going to place some text in our drawing. So I'm just going to change the layer, just so it makes it a little bit clearer. And I'll go to the text layer and I'm going to create some multi-line, sorry, I'll just go single line text. And initially it will ask you for the annotation scale. Sometimes if you haven't, if you've only just started using with using annotative text, you won't have thought to have set your scale. So if you're not sure about um, the confidence or being ready to, to just go in and do your notation, you've got this option here and you can select your scale from here. And I would select, suggest selecting one to 1,000 metres. After some time, when you're familiar with annotative text or you're just going into another drawing, you can click on don't show me this again and you won't be prompted with this window anymore. That's entirely up to you, your choice with that entry. So I'm just going to leave it so it comes on when I start a new drawing, it will ask for the scale of the drawing. So I'm just going to click on OK and it's asking me to specify a start point for my text. So I'll just go somewhere in here. We already have the height set. In my textile, the height was set to 2.5 millimetres. So at my drawing scale of 1 to 1,000, it should come out at 2.5 millimetres in height. The rotation I'm going to accept as zero, and I'm going to just type some text in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. If I hover over this object now, I have a little star picker that appears on screen. That signifies that that object is annotative. If I hover over the line work, there's no star picket. So that's just a, a static object that won't scale, which is normal. So just to show you quickly, this one is scalable. If I change the scale, I'll go to 1 to 500. Hold on. And for some reason, I'll try M text instead. I'm not sure what I've done there. I didn't press the button. Sorry, guys. So we we're at one to a thousand. I should have added scales. Click change scale now and you'll see that the drawing will change scale with our object. So the biggest trick, uh, Selwyn, is that, that one, even though it's I annotated, you button. have to tell it what scales to annotate in. Um, but you yes. talk about that button, that magical uh, lightning button um, is an easy way to get it to uh, remember the scales. Yes, and you also have up here, add delete scales. So you can click on that, choose your object, enter. You can choose multiple objects and you can actually go through and add scales to your object or objects. So I could click on add there. And if I want to add full scale and one to one, click OK and it will scale for those drawings. You also have up here, add delete scales. I can go in and choose one to one and full scale again and delete and those entries will be removed from all the objects that have been selected. So those of you who use Civil okay. 3D, uh, 
the scaling is automatic. Uh, it doesn't matter what scale you want it to uh, update in. In Civil 3D, they always update. But in AutoCAD, uh, we get to choose. So that's what Cell is showing you. Thanks, Cell. And also with um, Civil 3D, your, your normal text styles, if you're labeling your drawing with additional text, rather than the Civil 3D objects, you can use annotative scaling and it will scale as expected. If you just use a normal text style, you'll find that it won't scale for your drawing. Okay, so we'll continue, we'll put a couple of um, dimensions in here. I've got the current style of CSS set. If you don't have the style set, you just go down, click on it, and it will become current. So that's all there is to setting a style current. So I've got CSS, annotative current, and I'm going to create some dimensions. So I'm at 1 to 1,000. I'm going to place a dimension up here on the first line. I'll just zoom out a bit. Actually, I'll change my layer, make it a little bit clearer for you. Just put that one on the layer, dims. And I'll just continue putting some dimensions in. Wrong one. Okay, so I've put some dimensions in and they're at the scale of one to 1,000. If I change my scale now, these objects will change in size, go to one to 500 and they'll double, sorry, they'll go to half scale, go to one to 2,000 and they'll double. That's a bit weird what it says on, on the line there, but um, anyway, you'll see that at this scale, um, we might want to move things around. We've got an overlap here. We can move this object here. You'll see underneath, we've got the three scales that are applied to our drawing. The current one that is highlighted is one to 2000. So if our current scale is one to 500, it would only modify the one to 500 object. However, we're one to 2000, I'm going to select that object and I'm gonna move it away a little bit. I'll move it up there. So I've got my one to 2000 representation. I've got my one to 1000 representation and I've got my one to 500 representation here. So when I come back and click on the drawing in an empty space, it's showing me the one to 2000 entries. If I go back to one to five, sorry, one to 1000, you'll see that the original dimension is where it was initially. I can move that one also if I want. I'll go inside with that one. So at one to 1000, this dimension will appear inside this object. One to 500, it will appear just outside. And one to 2000, it will appear over on the side here where I moved it out. So I'm going to move this one a little bit, just get it off the line work and that won't affect any of the other objects. The same with the, the text object that I've put in here. Current scale is one to 2000, so I'm only working with the object that's related to one to 2000, and I can move that wherever I like. Click on an empty space, and it just shows that one entry. If I go back to one to 1000, that initial entry will be there. I can move that one around. So we have the three entries, one to 500, one to 1000, one to 2000. So now we'll add a hatch. And I'm just going to place it here. That style will do. You'll see that it actually has um, cut itself around the text objects. And you'll see with one to 1000, it's, it's cut the object around that entry. If I go to one to 2000 and display that, you'll see that it's, it's cut the hatch object around that object. 
However, when we changed scale just now, you'll notice that this, the hatch itself didn't change. With hatches, we merely have to select the hatch, right click, sorry, select the object, right click, I'm not sure why that's not scaling. Okay, we'll go to properties and over here there's an entry that says annotative. If I change that to yes, that object will become annotative and now when I change scale, the hatching will change scale and you'll see that it cuts out around the object. If we go back to one to a thousand, we have the same thing and the hatch rescales, one to two thousand and we have the same thing, the hatch rescales. So, and if you go back to just uh, clicking on the hatch, um, we, we both got tricked by associative versus annotative. Annotative, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I, we turned I, off associative, yes. but we meant to turn on annotative. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's highlighted up Similar there. To <laughs> we got caught like this yesterday. Um, yeah, I'll hand back. Yeah, not all good. Okay. So, with the annotative objects, when you select them, right click, you have an entry in here also for annotative object scale. So, you can add the current scale, delete current scale, add delete scales and synchronise multiple scale like positions. The same entries as what we have up here. So, to access these commands, add, delete, current, sorry, delete current scale and add delete, you could either right click and go to there or the easy, or the other way is up here. The other way of adding the scales, as I said before, it adds it globally to every annotative object is having this one highlighted or checked. So if we have that off, it won't update or add additional scales. Okay, so we're going to quickly flip over into a layout and I'll show you how layouts work with the viewports. I'm going to create a single viewport by just using the MView command and I'm going to choose the fit option just so it fills up my screen and that yellow is not a very good colour. So hopefully that, that's a little bit clearer for you. I'll just make that a little bit smaller. And I'm going to set a scale in here of one to 1000. Um, yes. I do have an object in here somewhere. Just have the wrong paper size. So we'll just go into here. Just make that a bit smaller. Just so we can see it. So normally you, when you go to a layout, you'll have your title block in millimetres uh, and then your viewport yeah. will be in the order of 500 mil by 800 mil um, suiting an A1 sheet. Uh, Paul Selwyn's had to go in blind uh, with no title block as a reference, but uh, yeah, he's setting up the title block to be uh, plotted out one-to-one -one on a sheet of paper. That's right, yeah. Um, I made the mistake of removing um, my plot settings yesterday and I should have restored them. So that, that's where I stuffed up with this one. So we've got a viewport, continuing on, we've got a viewport here set at 1 to 1000. I'm going to copy that viewport just next door. And in this one, I'm going to choose 1 to 500. So that scales up. And you'll see when we compare the text the dimensions, the dimensions are the same scale, whether it's a 1 to 1000 viewport or it's a 1 to 500 viewport. If we pan up to interior, the word interior, we'll see that it's at the same scale as 
the one to 500 drawing. And if we do the same thing, we'll copy that once more. And we'll set this one. You have to be in the viewport to set the scale when you're using these buttons down here. However, you can select the viewport in paper space and then you can go into properties and change the scale there. I think I went the wrong way there, 2000. Okay, so we've got one to 1000 in the center, one to 500 on the right and one to 2000 on the left. You'll see that we have the dimensions and the text the same scale in every viewport. And that's because of the annotative text and dimension styles that we've created. Um, we might find that in this drawing here, we don't want some of these dimensions to appear. So we can just highlight those. And up here, we can go to add delete scales. And we can delete 2000. Or with them highlighted, we can I'll just highlight again, right click, annotative object scale, and we can click on to delete current scale. Delete current scale is probably the easiest way there, or we actually have delete current scale in here. So what I'm going to do, just right click, annotative object scale, delete current scale, and those dimensions have gone from that scaled drawing. They still appear in all these others. And then when we have a look in model space, we highlight these. Actually, this button here, now that we have differing scales in our drawing, this button here says show annotation objects. If we uncheck that, our current scale of the drawing specified down here is 1 to 2000, so it's only showing the objects related to 1 to 2000. If I go to 1 to 500, all the objects come back because we did not delete the scale, the 1 to 500 scale from this one, and if we go to 1 to 1000, we didn't delete those object scales either in this scale. So they will remain. And then when we highlight, we only have two entries. Whereas if I look at the, the 60 up the top here, if I highlight, we have the three entries. So these ones still retain those scales. So we'll go back to paper space. I'll highlight these ones here and I'm going to go to annotative object, delete current scale. and you'll see that those objects have gone from this viewport. So you can have the, the scales applied and then you can remove the scales. So if you've gone through and you've created your text objects or annotative objects and you've had this button on, that's how you'll del delete those scales. So someone, I noticed uh, in the layout tab, once you removed the scale and the text wasn't didn't have that scale as part of it, it actually disappeared. If we were to pick the 60 up the top and actually turn off um, annotation, uh, we will still see it, but it'll be not we'll automatically it, scaling. Yes. So we do have a dimension. Uh, sorry, a it's the dimensions we're looking at. We have a dimension style of CSS, and that's annotative. And that doesn't mean that your objects all have to be have annotative abilities. You can have a single object and you can come over onto the properties window and you can change it to no. However, it's still displaying. Well, it should because it's not annotative anymore. It's just like plain old text. Oh, that's right. Scale itself. Yep. It's yeah. scale. It's, yeah. It's doing oh, what just, the old school brain, used to do. Pre the brain system seized. Yes. I could see it. I didn't register that they were different scales. So, yes, with, annotation, with annotative turned off, 
the objects remain, but they stay at whatever scale they were created originally. So that's why this one's twice the size and then that one's twice the size once more. You can do that with any of them, anything. Same with the hatch, you can turn that off if you want and the hatch will just enlarge or reduce and there won't be any um, scaling of the hatch. But the hatch is handy when you've got multiple layouts and maybe a, a call out to a part of your drawing, you'll be able to get the, the hatching and the dimensions and everything to look the same no matter on the scale of your viewport. Rather than in the old days where we had to create separate layers, you know, you create text dash 500, text dash 1000, text dash whatever it may be for the different um, scales that we're using and then you'd have to remember to turn those layers off or turn those layers on, freeze, thaw, whatever it may be to try and get the display that you want. However, now with annotative text and labeling and the objects, they're all created on one layer. So this is one object and it's on the layer dimension. So we no longer have to create the layers to specify the different drawing scales. And that'll be a big time, time saver in itself, just being able to apply scales to your, to your objects in your drawing. So um, before we were moving objects around, if you recall, we um, moved these around here. We might find that we've moved things around and they're not where we want and we want to reset them back to one position. We have a button up here that says sync scale positions. If we click on that one, choose the dimension here, enter, it will go, it will bring all the entries to the same insertion point as the object that you select. So that's why these ones have gone back here. If I go over to this one here, sync scale positions, highlight it, actually that's a bit pointless really because I I moved, I don't, I'll move one of these. So what I was trying to do, I should have had one that I've modified the settings for. So this one here, it will show you each of the entries. If I click on the 20 up here, they should all associate back to that point. However, they're not. Oh, sorry, I'll undo that. Select object, and it's brought them all down to the same point. Okay, we'll have a look at, that sort of pretty much covers how you would work with dimensions and with text. Um, we're going to create a block. Blocks can also be annotative. Generally, when the blocks rescale themselves, it's usually as symbology rather than a, a real life object in your drawing. You might have a water main or a trig point or something like that, and you want that, say a trig point, you want that to scale based on your drawing size. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to create a triangle, a three-sided triangle. I'll just use the polygon command and I'm gonna make it three sides and I'm just going to make it upright. So this is my object that I'm going to turn into a block. However, while we're still look, while we're looking at blocks, attributes can also be set to scale based on your drawing scale. The attributes can scale and leave the, the symbology as it is, or you can set the whole block to be annotative so the whole thing would scale up and down and that would scale up your attributes as well that are in there. So I'm just gonna go to at def for attribute definition and similar to the other entries for our styles, we have a button here that says annotative. So if we're creating attributes and we have annotative on, that 
attribute will scale up and down in our drawing, even if the block is not set to scale itself. But the, the attributes will scale up and down. I won't be adding any attributes to the drawing today. We're just gonna create a block, but that's where you'll find that location for the attributes. So I'm going to create a block. So I'll just start the block command. I'm a command line user from years back, so sorry about that. I'm not going up onto the ribbon and properties and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's just the way I've been working for years. It's just faster for me to type stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna enter the block command and, excuse me, <coughs> we have the block definition that comes up on screen. I'm going to create a block called trig definition. I'm gonna specify a base point on screen. I'm gonna select the objects on screen. Over here, we have the annotation option. Similar to what we had with text, it also has the option to match the block orientation to layout. So as with text, if you rotate your drawing, the text will, sorry, if you rotate the drawing, the block will stay at the same angle as what we see on screen at the moment. So at the moment, I'm not going to check on annotative. I'm just gonna create the block as it is. So okay, insertion point, geometric center, and the objects, I'm just gonna select that one object. So now we'll have a look in our layout and you'll see that each of the, the trigonometry points, I'll just um, pan around, are different scales. However, being a trig point, we want it to be the same scale in each of the viewports. And we didn't create the block as annotative. However, we're going to convert it into an annotative block. This is handy with legacy drawings. You might have a survey that, that, that's come in and it's got blocks at a certain scale in your drawing. You could change them to being annotative in the process that I'm just gonna do in a moment and all the blocks will update as you wish. So to make this block annotative, I'm just gonna double highlight it, double click on it and that will bring up the block editor. So I'm going to edit block, sorry, trig def Okay, so that brings up our block editor and on properties, we'll see over here that there's an option down here under block that says annotative. If we change that to yes, that block is now annotative. That's as simple as it is to make a block able to be scaled based on your drawing scale. So that's set. We'll now click close block editor. I'll save the changes can ignore this one because um, it's fine. It's just saying that um, if the objects aren't scalable, they won't scale. So we'll go here and we'll change our scale to one to 500 and you'll see our trig point has changed scale. We'll now go to one to 2000 and we have our trig point has enlarged to that scale. If we go into our layout now, rather than having different sized trig points, they're now all the same scale in our viewports. Another one that we'll just quickly look at. Uh, is multi-leaders, same thing as with all the other entries. I'll just turn off, ortho off, which is F8 and I'll place a multi-leader just here, and I'm just gonna call it corner. So I've got a multi-leader here. I can add my additional points. Not very good drafting, but anyway, it might give you an idea what's going on. So I've got one to two, 2,000. This is where it's located. I'm going to move it around slightly. Gonna turn on my show annotation scale. I'm gonna click on add scales to annotative objects as I change scale. 
and now I'm going to go to 1 to 1000, which will create the 1 to 1000 annotative object for me. I'm going to relocate that down here, and you'll see that the multi-leaders are getting a bit chaotic. However, when we click on a blank part of the drawing, it only shows the one that is applicable to the scale. We'll go to 1 to 500 now, and I'll do the same thing. I'll move that around off that piece, sorry, I'll get that off there. I think I'll grab the leader as well at the same time then. I'll just undo that one. I had O, o snap on, I think that's what um messed that one up. So one, two, 500, I've got that multi-leader there and I've got my text here. One to 1000. I've got my multi-leader label down here and my leaders are all leading into that and my label of text is up here. And we might as well just go into the layout and you'll see the different positions of the multi-leaders we modified in model space. And the same thing, you can highlight, delete, add delete scales and I might want to delete the 1 to 2000 entry, press delete, okay, and then in the 1 to 2000 window, sorry, not that one, 1 to 2000 entry, that multi-leader has gone. I might want it back, add delete, add, and then choose 1 to 2000, okay, okay, and it will come back. Okay, so that's a brief basic outline of annotative objects. So what we need, the ribbon, we have these commands up here, the far end, the annotation scaling portion of the ribbon. If annotation is able to be added to an object, that will be available in properties. Lines, polylines, objects that aren't scalable will not have the annotation scale entry available, so it will only work with the objects that we stated before, your, your different types of text, your different types of leaders, dimensions, blocks and attributes. So and um, down uh, here, yeah. yes? Sorry, I'm, I'm yes, interrupting. Uh, you uh, mentioned and showed a, a couple of times the tick box about um, rotating to the layout. Would you be able to show us that? Maybe rotate okay, one of the yes. layouts and, and then turn it on? just to, so we can all see what it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back into the, the text style. Sorry, modify the text style. Back here, I'm gonna select match text orientation to layout, apply, close. So the text style CSS will now rotate based upon our layout orientation. So that's the text that I've modified or the style that's been modified. Go back into my layout and I'll go over to probably this one. I'll change my orientation. It's a bit hard to see that. I'll just go UCS and I'll just create a UCS. Set it to plan, current UCS. And that hasn't rotated. It should have, hold on, just bear with me for a moment. It may be because, it's because I, hold on. Because the object was already in my drawing, it won't match to layout. So if I, I change the entry here, match orientation to layout, that will work. However, if now I go in here and I create another text object, and uh, this one should rotate. Sorry, this on. So we come back in here and you'll see that in, we don't actually have the additional scales. I'll just select it all. I'm gonna add delete scales, add, and I'm gonna add both of those scales to everything and okay. And now when I come back into my layout, you'll see we have here this, that's our piece of text. 
with our viewport that is normal orientation. This is our piece of text with the viewport rotated. And that's the one, the other one that isn't rotated because of the UCS. However, if I change the UCS on this one, I'll go the opposite way. You'll now see in here, if I grab that one, it's now horizontal in our viewport. Yeah, that is cool, especially for blocks. I mean, having the blocks all yep, rotated. The same thing possibly. with blocks is key. So if I should be able to double click on the block, hold on. I'll edit that one. And we should have match orientation to layout. So I'll go in here, yes. I'll close the block editor, save changes to that block. Still looks the same in here. Now I'll go to my layout and you'll see that each of those blocks are still horizontal or the orientation that they were originally. Okay. And I think that's about it. Just um, remember the show annotation objects at current scale. You won't have the, the scaling ability in here unless you're in a viewport. So if that disappears, you just need to go into your viewport. You can also highlight a viewport and you can come in here and you can change its scale. Thank you, so that's great. And the list, not a problem. The list that's in here is the same as whatever the list is that we have created down here. Okay, I, th I think that's about it, Shane. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much, and thank you, everyone, for your attendance and uh, for some great questions. Uh, so there has been a, a range of questions asked during the session, and I'll just um, hit up some of those, particularly the ones that I haven't answered. Um, so there was a yep. question about the cutout that happened behind the, the text on the hatch, um, and somebody was asking, uh, if you move the text, does that cut out sort of behind the text move with it? So I think the answer to that is that text can have text masking, um, and that's what actually hides the background. But that text just needs to be positioned in front of the hatch. So it's just about draw order. So it was, it was the fact that the interior text cell was hiding the hatch. Um, and that was because of uh, text, text masking. Um, so... Uh, I changed yeah, the see, setting. See it's hiding in order because the text is behind, the hatch is behind the text. So the word interior. If we look at our current scale. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now it disappears. Can you click on that interior text and just right click and go draw order center front? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it but should actually can, be you cutting. You can put a background mask there. on your text. Uh, and and that would then uh, hide the hatch behind it. That that one's that one's cool. I think we're cool with that. Um, and I'll add. Okay, so I've got my hatch. I'll just undo that. I'll try to undo, undo. So if I highlight my hatch, and up here under boundaries, you've got the option to select an object. So if I do select and choose my item. Well, that's how you're going to hide it. Okay. And and then um, as we move it around, it should actually update the hatching. Yeah. So you're actually so you can see cutting out here. The, yeah. It is cutting out the hatch. If I go to the other to one of the other scales, one to five hundred, you'll see here that it's actually it's cut. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the, the alternative is to add a text a text mask. Um, that that's another way yep. to do it as well. Okay, uh, another question, uh, just with regarding the civil 3D labels, um, and that's this yes. a little bit off, off topic, but uh, I did throw away the line that you don't have to set the scale for civil 3D labels to rescale at. Um, the, the only thing really to say is if you do add a civil 3D label, as soon as you change the uh, annotation scale down the bottom, all civil 3D labels will update. 
and when you put them in a yep. viewport, viewport, they'll automatically resize. Um, so that's the only difference yep. there. There was a question here uh, from a customer. Can you have matched a layout with a rotation of 45 degrees? I think the answer is yes. Uh, so can you just rotate that word interior by 45 degrees? Basically, that uh, 45 degree rotation should be the same then uh, in all viewports because it's set to However, However, it, uh, the textile is set to be horizontal or to the orientation. Lock it in. So you can't do a, a AutoCAD rotation on it? Well, there you go. Yeah. So that, it does lock you in to be if, if I was, If I was doing... Um, I'll just go text. 2.5 high. Oh, hold on, I didn't get the rotation. It will go in as horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. There is a question here um, about that uh, layout control. It says, will it change if you change the model UCS? And I think we've sort of proved that, yes, it locks in horizontally no matter what. Um, so that's answered. Uh, there is a question here. Could the annotation be used on line types? Uh, I don't think line types are annotative, but you can set no. them to scale in viewports or not. Uh, there's also line type scale that you can apply to an individual object. So if you need your text larger or smaller or whatever it is in your line, I'd, I'd change the line type scale of that individual object, or if um, you know you set your line type scale for your drawing, and you create your line types applicable to that scale. Yeah. Um, when you change your UCS, sorry, not UCS, your annotative um, scale. Hold on, I'll just um, I'll just load a, a text file. You keep talking, Shane. Okay. So uh, what I just on that question so the question was how would you set line type um, line types to be annotative there is a variable called um, paper space line type scale so PS LT scale uh, and if you play with that number you can choose whether or not line types uh, rescale in uh, viewports or don't okay so paper space scaling on or off so I, I'd suggest if you're thinking about how this correlates with uh, line types, try changing the variable PSLT scale. Uh, that's that's my recommendation. So I was just have to align with some text in it. So you'll see that your line type scaling is changing for it. It's keeping it consistent across viewports. So once you have your, your line type scale set or your PSLT scale set for your object, it doesn't matter um, what it is, set it to one to a thousand and then when you have your viewports, the line type spacings and sizing will adapt to whatever scale you have as your viewport. As you can see here, I've created a gas line in here. It's just been drawn into my, it's just been added to my drawing doesn't matter what scale I have set down here. If I draw, if I draw that line again, it'll be the same size. It's not annotative at all, and the line type cannot become annotative. You've only got the PSLT scale and the LT scale, which is what Shane was talking about. But you can see that the the line types have scaled based upon the viewports. Okay, next one, Shane. Okay, so I'm just having a look uh, at some of the questions that have recently come in. So someone's just made a comment that um, when they've run annotative hatching, uh, they've often had mm -hmm. to reset the origin of the hatch uh, for those more uh, detailed hatch patterns like concrete uh, because yeah, um... uh, that, that point of origin moves. Yeah, that's that's not an uncommon thing to happen in AutoCAD. Uh, when when I was drafting, it was often the requirement to move the hatch 
insertion point close to the object. Yeah. It depends you just on want to show how the, that the, how the, happens? The real world, it, it's the real world coordinates that's too far from zero. Yeah. Do you just want to show that's how to why reset the or, origin, Selwyn? Because it's a pretty easy thing to change in case people didn't know they could do it. Hold on, I'll just... Um, so it's just been a while. The so just click on the hatch. And then, uh, so you're used to keyboard, right? But right in the ribbon up the top next to associative is set origin. Set origin, and then it's also over. Yeah, it's, yep. It'll be somewhere else, of course. Somewhere over there. Knowing AutoCAD, but uh, I always go the ribbon. So set origin, yeah. and then you just pick uh, where the uh, pattern starts from. Yep. So if you, for anybody who's ever created concrete hatch pattern, and it doesn't look like concrete, it looks like a, a spray of random lines. Uh, the origin is the problem, as Selwyn explained. Yes. Um, the solution is to run that command set origin and just pick something local to where the hatch pattern has been created, uh, and it, it will fix itself up. That's right, yes. Okay, I think that rounds out all the questions that we can answer at the moment. Uh, Ross is, is uh, the original uh, person who inquired, inquired about the origin said that uh, yep. it keeps going back to the original. So I think we'll just have to take that offline and uh, do a bit of checking ourselves on okay. how that behavior, yep. um, sort of indicative of a bug in AutoCAD by the sense of things. Uh, yep. Okay, so uh, look, thank you everybody for your time. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. Uh, greatly appreciated. I will, uh, any questions I haven't talked about uh, right now, I will uh, fill out some answers. So if you did ask a question, hang around. Um, I'll type you some things back. Uh, there is a little handout uh, about this session included. So if you look at the handouts area, uh, you could pull that down. It's really just a step-by-step, -step, very much that uh, one of the slides that Selwyn showed, showing you sort of the process that you would go through. So... Uh, yeah, on behalf of myself and the organisation uh, and so on, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and attention. Uh, and we also look forward to hopefully seeing you at the next session, if that's of interest. So I'm just going to steal the uh, presentation podium. Uh, so our next session is uh, Wednesday next week. Uh, we'll be looking at the ways of dealing with point clouds and creating terrain models out of them. Uh, so. It's a very much a fundamental session, but if you haven't explored point clouds very much, um, certainly could be something to look at and uh, learn from. And we will be uh, posting this webcast recording up onto YouTube um, at some point. So if you're interested in reviewing what uh, this session was about, uh, keep an eye out on, the, on our YouTube channel and you should see it turn up there. So uh, again, Thank you, everybody, for your time, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. And thank you very much, Selwyn. Uh, fantastic uh, webcast. Thank you, everyone.